ready for another Game Kitchen's Game Maker tutorial? Boy, I sure am. Oh boy, it's been a while. If you haven't watched my videos before, I suggest you watch some of the previous ones. But today, I'm going to teach you how to make your own video game from scratch. Not just these cheesy ones, a really good one. Yeah, the bad guy's going to come and try to destroy all your stuff. Then you're going to take your magic plunger and you're going to whack him with it. Yeah! Well, better stay tuned if you want to learn something. Oh yeah. Better beat him. Beat the bad guy. So why don't you load up your Gary Kitchen Sprite Maker and start making your Sprite. I'm making a good looking guy named Charles. I sped up the video though. That way you don't have to wait a long time. You're looking down on him. You see him holding that little shooter gun thing. Well, I'm finished doing frame one. Now I got to work on frame two. Frame two is blank. And I want to redraw that all over again. So what I'm going to do is go to command. I'm going to copy. Copy frame one to frame two. Yep. Now all I have to do is change things up a little bit. Those are his little feet. So if I want to animate it, one to two. It looks like he's walking. Let's save this file. Save. We'll call this one up. Yep. Now what I want to do is I want to make our Charles sprite walking downward. I don't want to redraw it, so I'm just going to go command flip with the joystick. Now let's go to frame two. Command flip. Let's animate that. Oh boy. And go and save it. We're going to call it down one. Now to make a side view of our Charles Sprite. Now that our Sprite is made, don't clear the screen yet. We're going to use his body as a template. We're going to have him shoot a plunger out of that little gun thing out of his arm. We'll put the plunger right about here. That way it will line up. Let's save this as plunger spelled with an R. Now let's make the bad guy. Because you have to have a bad guy. This guy's going to be really bad. He's going to, he's going to be mean. He's going to be really mean. He's going to have a red face and, and, and beady eyes and everything. And he's going to jump at you. Yeah. We're going to call him Meanie. Now we're going to copy frame one to frame two. Copy. Two. Now we're going to go shift. We're going to move our little guy up on frame two. And then we're going to edit it a little bit. Let's copy two to three. Animate. Look, he's jumping, man. Jump, jump, jump. Faster, faster, faster. After you save it, Let's go quit. Go to menu and load the scene maker. We have to make a scene now. Well, let's go build something. Select draw, select zoom, choose black, take our box to the corner. Now let's draw something. You know, I think I'm going to make some bricks, like a, like a brick wall. How do I make bricks? Just like that. You know, I think I like red bricks. Let's color them in red. What you see here are some bricks. But guess what? Making a lot of bricks takes a lot of time. So let's go to copy and zoom. Copy and it's easy. Just select each corner. Then click where you want to put it. Just like that. Now repeat the process. Copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. Over and over. Well, for the sake of time, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit till I finish this picture. See you then. They are much better. Let's have a view of this. See that? So in this game, the bad guys are going to come down these hallways between the brick walls. And they're going to try to destroy my toilet bowls. Get them all dirty and everything. I can't let that happen. So my guy is armed with special plungers. He's going to throw at the bad guys. We'll ward them off. They'll keep them away from my toilet. I'll tell you what. Well, you know, we need to make one more scene. 
What happens if we die and the bad guy wins? Mm. All right, here's the next scene. Are you ready? Ooh, look at that. That's the bad guy. That's what happens if you lose and he wins. Can't let that happen. Let's go up. Save it. We'll call it mean. Mean too. Now to choose some sounds. Ooh, that sounds like something blew up. I'll take that one. Oh, I like that one too. Sounds like someone threw something. Now open up Music Maker. You can add your own music, make your own notes, or you can use the demo ones that are on the disc. Let's play this one. some scary music if you die. Ooh, that's kind of scary. I think we're ready to put it together now. Oh yeah. We're gonna start off here by clearing score one. We don't have a score yet, but we will later. Scene one is game one. Scene two is mean two. Yep, that's it. By default, it displays C1, but I'm going to put it in here because we're going to jump back here later. Sprite 1 is left Charles. We need to choose an X position for Sprite 1. X position is left to right. I think 136 sounds good. Now let's choose a Y position. Y position is up and down. I'm going to try 50. Let's test it out. Go to run. There's our guy. So far, everything's right where it's supposed to be. Now we're going to start a variable. A variable is a letter that stands for something. We're going to say E stands for zero, at least in the beginning here. I will come back to this variable in a bit, but for now we'll press on. Grab yourself a number here. We'll call this 1001. We'll need this number later when we create our subroutine or loop. I will add my song here at the beginning of the loop. That way it will always continuously play it. Now to get our joystick set up. If joystick one, is off, then we'll need to assign a sprite to that. Sprite one is left one one, which is the same one as before. Next thing we should do is give our sprite an animation speed. But since the joystick's off, we should have zero for the animation speed. After that, select a movement speed. That's gonna be zero too, because the joystick's off by the way. Now to find the and if command. The and if command tells the computer that there is no more instructions to be had when the joystick is off. Now what I'm going to do is copy what I just put here and change it. So I don't have to change everything. Click on copy and paste it down below. So instead of off, I'm going to go down. If he's going down, I'm going to make the sprite down one. We'll animate him at 30. Let's copy again. Copy this, and I'll paste it right down below. Now I gotta change these values, going from down to up, and change our sprite from down one to up one. Oh, I forgot I have to put a direction. To insert a line, click on it, go over to insert. Now let's go find the command I need to put in here. I forgot to put sprite one direction. It's in here. Set sprite one direction to down. If you don't tell which way to go, he won't go nowhere. You know, I think I'm just gonna copy that one line that says Sprite One Direction and put that down below here. Just like that. Now to change the values to zero, which is up. Guess I better find a button command in here, otherwise my guy won't be able to shoot anything. Oops, better put a cursor on the bottom. All right, now, if button one is on, we gotta find some commands for that. Before we get too much further, we have to set some variables. So write these commands down on a piece of paper, because who's going to remember what A means or B means? Set A to Sprite One's X position, at least when the button's pushed anyway. Set B to 
right one's Y position. Now that the variables are in, we can add a sprite too, which is plunger. But this time it's going to be a little different. The X and Y positions of the plunger are going to be variables. So sprite 2 plunger, its X position is going to be A. And remember, A represents sprite 1's X position, so they're the same. Sprite 2 Y position will be B. The plunger's direction will be left. And of course, you know, our plunger needs to move, so it needs a movement speed. Hmm, how about about 35? That sounds like a good speed. And a sound would be nice when you press the button. Let's find a sound. Hmm, I wonder why I named it CLOZ. Now to find the command and if. Oh, it's time for another variable again. Write this down. C equals plunger to X position. You just gotta know that. Now, if C is less than 1, what are we going to do? Don't forget, C is the X position of the plunger, left to right. Hmm, if it's less than 1, why don't we clear the plunger? So we'll clear Sprite 2 plunger. I suppose we better put an end if in there. Variable time, D is going to equal Sprite 1 Y position. Write that down. Now I'm going to copy this line here and paste it on the bottom. I'm going to change it from C to D. So if D, which is Sprite One's Y position, is less than, we'll make it less than 45. Then we're going to change the direction so our, our guy can't go up higher than 45. In other words, when our guy gets 45 pixels from the top of the screen, his direction will go down so he can't go up anymore. We're going to add an AND IF to end this command. I think I'm going to copy and paste a couple of these lines and then edit them here. Copy and paste. I'm going to change this line here where it says D is less than 45. I'm going to make it say D is greater than 228. And if my sprite does go past 228 pixels, I'm going to make his direction go up. That way he can't go down anymore. You got to know those things. Well, I think it's time to test this. The way we do that is we put a jump to label 1001. Remember that label we put way at the top? Let's see if this works. For some reason, the plunger's not shooting down the aisle like it's supposed to. I'll check that out in a little bit. Well, my guy won't go up. Or down. Well, the limits worked. I couldn't go too far up or too far down. However, I couldn't shoot the plunger. It didn't go down the aisle. As I examined my coding, I found a spot where it says Sprite 1 movement speed is 35, but that should have been Sprite 2 plunger. Now that it's fixed, let's try again. Ah, that's much better. Now I need a bad guy. Oh yeah, where did we leave off? Oh yeah, I put a jump 2 label on here. I'm just going to temporarily delete that line for now. Now that you're getting the hang of it, I'm going to move on just a little bit faster with a different method. So we left off right here at the end if. So you'll need to add these lines. If plunger 2 hits sprite 3, then add 100 to score 1. Also, clear plunger 2. And of course, we're going to set C to plunger 2's X position. Here's a new variable. Set F to a random number between 0 and 63. We're going to use this later on. We're going to use this number to set a random movement speed for that bad guy who's going to come after us randomly at different speeds. And this line here sets a random number between 0 and 3. We're going to use this number to randomly have our bad guy show up at different parts of the board. Kind of sneaky, huh? And this line here, it just makes a boom sound when the sprites hit each other. And here's the end if again, just telling the computer that we're finished with the task that we gave it when the sprite 2 hit sprite 3. Well, just a second ago, I told you that E represented a random number between 0 and 3. Well, if it lands on 0, this is what it's going to do. It's going to make a sprite called Meanie. He's the bad guy. It's going to put that sprite at X position 15 and Y position 201. That's going to put our bad guy on the bottom, by the way. And on the bottom line, 
our meanie, our bad guy sprite, is going to be going the direction of 64. That's right. And wait, there's more on the next page. Sprite 3, our bad guy, his movement speed is going to be F. And remember, F was a random number between 0 and 63. You never know how fast he's going to go. This next line, Sprite 3, animation speed, 20. That means the bad guy is going to be animating at 20 miles an hour, man. This line here sets the value of E to 4, temporarily. Why? Because it's out of the range between 0 to 3. So over here, if E equals 1, that's that random number again, Sprite 3, meanie, our bad guy, will be at X position 15, Y position 134. That means he'll be in the middle. His direction will also be right. His movement speed will be at random, up to 63 miles an hour. Sprite 3 animation speed will be 20, and it sets E back to 4 again. And if brings a close to that set of commands. Now if E, which is that random number from 0 to 3, equals 2, well, we'll put a sprite, Meanie, the bad guy, out again. Changing the page, changing the page. Now, the first top line, sprite 3, our bad guy, speed 25. Sprite 3, X position 15. Y position 140. That's about in the middle. Our direction will be right. Our movement speed will be random till 63. Set E at 4 again. And if. How about... If E equals 3, hmm, Sprite is meanie. Sprite 3 animation speed is 25. The X position is 15 again. Y position is 75 at the top. Direction is right. Movement speed will be random to 63. Set E to 4 again. Flipping the page, flipping the page. We'll start off with and if. Now we're going to set the letter G to Sprite 3, the bad guy's X position. If G is greater than 160, then they're going to have use clear to Sprite 3. Then jump to label 1002. That's just down below here. After you jump to label 1002, it displays the other scene, scene 2. It clears Sprite 1. The song is doomed. Pause for about 6 seconds. It clears the score, and then it jumps to label 1003. We haven't put a label 1003 up there yet. Let's go to the beginning. There, 1003. Are you ready? Let's see if this game worked. Run! <laughs> What if I miss and he gets my toilet? Ugh! I lost! And it starts over. Well, I hope you like my game. If you want to modify it, I'll put it up on the web. Have fun. I put up the text of all the coding we did today. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs>